Well, hello, and welcome back to the Aquascape Guide, where we cover all the systems that keep your planted tanks happy and healthy. If you didn't already know, my name's Phil, and I'm from theaquascapeguide.com. In this video series, we've already covered how to select a light for a planted aquarium, how to set up and dial in a CO2 system, how to provide nutrients to our planted tanks, how to test and adjust our water chemistry, even how to set up proper filtration for your planted tank. If you've not seen those videos yet, you should totally go back and watch those, as all these systems you're learning about are interconnected. And by not watching them, you're missing loads of detail on each of these subjects. But today, I wanted to recap our methods and summarize our entire approach. You'll even have access to a little checklist to make sure you're not missing any of these aspects. But first, let's start with lighting. PAR, or photosynthetic active radiation, is basically the gas pedal for growth in our planted tanks. The higher the PAR, the more stimulated the plants will be to grow. The light we select for our planted aquarium should be around 80 to 120 PAR. It's best if your light has all sorts of LED colors like white, red, green, and blue, or WRGB as we call it. The more colors the LED light has, the wider the light spectrum will be. The University of Michigan found that red LEDs or hyper-red LEDs at 660 nanometers actually grows plants the best. I'll put a link to the article we wrote about the University of Michigan's findings in the description below. The lights that we recommend are a Phoenix CRV for those on a budget, but if you have a little more funds, the Phoenix ALC model has a little more PAR output and hyper-red LEDs. We also like the Twinstar S-Series and Chihiro's WRGB2 models. We also like to leave our lights on for 8 hours a day and have them simply turn on and off on a timer. No fancy pants ramp up or down with our lights. If you have not already, go watch episode 2 of our guide called Selecting a Light for a Planted Aquarium. Next we'll talk about nutrients. The foundation of our approach is based off of Liebig's Law of the Minimum, which teaches us that growth is dictated not by the total resources available, but by the scarcest resource. This is just fancy talk for the idea that we need to provide all the nutrients a plant could possibly need at all times to make sure the plant doesn't run out of anything stunting its growth. We achieved this through using an aqua soil paired with the EI method of liquid fertilization. As talked about in our providing nutrients video, aqua soils have a really high CEC which allows them to soak up all the micros and macros provided by the EI method. It is in our humble opinion that it doesn't really matter what aqua soil you go with as some just have more nutrients than others, which is great, but we're actually just relying on the aqua soil's high CEC to soak up all the fertilizer. If you do get an aqua soil packed with nutrients, that just means you might be able to hold off on dosing liquid fertilizers and let your root feeding plants exhaust the nutrients in the substrate before having to dose the water column with fertilizer. Just remember though that the aqua soil is only feeding your root feeding plants, so if you still have water column feeders like mosses, epiphytes, or floating plants, you're going to still need to feed them with a liquid fertilizer. Again, our preferred approach to liquid fertilization is the EI method, as it provides all the compounds plants need to stay happy and healthy. We just released an instructional video on how to get into the EI method, so check that out if you're interested in learning how to do so. We'll put a link in the description below. But if the EI method is a little intimidating for you, check out Thrive by Nylock G. It's the best all-in-one fertilizer on the U.S. market. You can use coupon code ASG10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. But what if you're not in the U.S.? If you're in the U.K., we suggest TNC Complete. If you're in Australia, we'd suggest LCA All-in-One. If you're in Asia, we'd suggest using APTEI. You're welcome, Dennis. When using the EI method, or Thrive, we need to boost up our nitrates up to 10 to 20 parts per million. Most of the time we'll be getting such great growth that we won't be able to keep them up this high as our plants will be consuming a lot of the nutrients quickly. However, if we have fish in our tank already and we're hovering around 20 parts per million in nitrates without adding any liquid fertilization, you'll then have to dose enough to boost your nitrates up to 30 to 40 parts per million. We just need to make sure that we're accounting for the nitrates that our fish create. However, if you're running the EI method and want to rely on our fish to produce the nitrates, you can just simply add less potassium nitrate into your macro mix. For more detailed information on nutrients, check out episode 4 of our guide titled Providing Nutrients in a Planted Aquarium or our Estimative Index Guide. Oh yeah, can't forget about CO2. Now if you want really fast, vigorous plant growth to outcompete the algae obviously, using an aqua soil and a fertilizer just isn't going to cut it. We suggest all tanks injecting CO2 as carbon is a major building block for plant growth. 
Now we don't have to have some crazy CO2 setup. Like for a 40 gallon or less, we suggest a paintball tank setup and an F-Zone regulator. We'll put a link in the description below to an article we wrote which has all the parts needed to set up a paintball CO2 system. Regardless of whether or not you have a fancy pants CO2 system, the goal is to just inject enough CO2 to drop your pH one full point prior to your lights coming on and keeping it there for the duration of the photo period. This will keep us at the sweet spot of 30 parts per million of CO2 dissolved into our water column. We typically start CO2 injection one hour before the lights come on and then turn it off one hour before the lights turn off. If you're having a hard time achieving that one point pH drop, you either need to inject more or go with a more efficient method of CO2 diffusion, like an inline diffuser from CO2 Art or a CO2 reactor from Nylock G. You may also need to look at your KH to make sure it's not too high, as a high KH simply prevents your pH from dropping. But more information on that in the next section. For more information on CO2, check out episode 3 of our guide titled How to Set Up a CO2 System for a Planted Aquarium. Next is water parameters and filtration. It doesn't really matter what lights you have, how much you're injecting CO2, and if you're using the EI method or not, if your tank's water just isn't suitable for plants. We feel like water chemistry is one of the most overlooked elements in this hobby. Depending on your tap water, or if you're running a water softener at home, you may need to invest in an RO system. Or let's say you're on well water and your water is really soft, you may just need to add a little remin remin remineralizer. Yeah, that word. The main goal is to maintain a GH and KH of around 4 degrees, which puts our pH right around 6.8. And with all this nutrients we're dosing with either the EI method or Thrive, we need to make sure that we're processing 50 to 75% water changes weekly to keep our fertilizers and organics from building up. During these changes, we need to make sure that we're pulling out as much of the organic matter and detritus out of our tank as possible. And something that can help us do this outside of water changes is a canister filter. Dun, dun, dun! We really like Fluval's canister filters, as they are super customizable and depending on the model, can help us hit our filtration target of turning over our tank's water 10 times per hour. If you have a smaller tank, you could go with a mini canister or a hang on back filter. Just make sure you load the filter up with as much mechanical and biological filtration as you can. And ditch the sponge filters. Yuck. I hate those things. They're just terrible for planted aquarium. Okay, I won't get started. Anywho, you can learn more about water parameters in episode 5 and more about filtration in episode 6 of our guide. Bam! And Bob's your uncle. That's it! Planted tanks are really this simple. If your plants start looking sad or start showing signs of deficiency, you can go down our checklist. We'll put a downloadable checklist in the description below. This will allow you to perform a little systems check to make sure you're not missing anything. This would be having a light output close to 80 to 120 par, or ejecting CO2 dropping our pH one full point prior to the lights coming on and keeping it there through the entire photo period, or at least an hour before the lights turn off. We're dosing the EI method or using Thrive and keeping our nitrates around 20 parts per million if you don't have fish and 30 to 40 parts per million if you do have fish. We have an aqua soil for our substrate. We have our GH and KH around 4 degrees, which puts our pH around 6.8. We're processing 50 to 75% water changes weekly, removing as much detritus and junk from our tank as we can. And lastly, our filter turns over our entire tank's volume 10 times per hour and we've rinsed out the junk out of our canister within the last four to six months. If you follow our checklist, you'll have a happy and thriving planted tank. Oh man, thank you guys so much for following us through our guide. We hope you're able to learn something with the two decades of knowledge we bring to the table. And don't worry, this isn't goodbye. We have tons more videos to create and subjects to talk about. If you have an idea for another video, drop it in the comment section below. We'll be sure to jot it down. We also would love to see your guys' tanks running our methods. Make sure you hashtag your tank on social media with the hashtag the ASG method so we can see your amazing aquascapes. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video, whatever that might be. Later, scapers.